Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so welcome uh, to the uh, last session for today and this week, uh, which are going to have uh, two talks, first by Didier Polblanc, followed by one by Itamar Kimchi. Uh, and Didier is going to talk about topological chiral spin liquids and describing them within the PEPS framework. Uh, uh, both talks will be uh, broadcast via Zoom. And uh, I welcome you all. Hope you had a nice poster session and tea and coffee. So Didier, we uh, look forward to your talk and uh, it's over to you now. Thank you very much, uh, Yazir. And also thank you to, uh, to you and uh, the organizers of this meeting for inviting me. It's a real pleasure. Uh, so unfortunately, I could not make it to uh, ICTS uh, Bangalore this time, but uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to, to come next time, next meeting you organize. Uh, so, so I will talk about uh, topological uh, chiral spin liquids. Um, so uh, the, the outline is the following. Um, it's written here. So first, I will give you some general remarks about what we believe are chiral spin liquids and some analogy with what we know very well, which is the physics of the fractional quantum hole effect. Uh, then I will uh, show you some example of simple models that uh, we believe do host uh, chiral spin liquids. So they have both uh, SU2 symmetry as usual uh, spin system in condensed matter, or they can have even more exotic SUN symmetry that can be realized in uh, cold atom systems, for example. Uh, and then I will try to focus on the re recent result we've been uh, uh, looking at, which has to do with a conceptual issue uh, and a so-called no-go theorem that uh, uh, we were worried about. And uh, uh, I will tell you how it, how it goes. Okay, so um, now I hope, uh, ah, okay. Uh, yeah, so what are topological uh, Carol, uh, uh, spin liquids? Uh, we can make an analogy with the physics of the uh, quantum wall effect. So, so there are this uh, in this uh, uh, in this field there are uh, many many uh, topological chiral states. Uh, they are genuine in the, in this field, and um, so the idea is that there could be similar states uh, on the in pin, in, sp in quantum spin system on the lattice. Uh, so there will be analogs of this fractional quantum wall state, and hence. Uh, we could have uh, two, uh, basically two classes. Uh, one class would be the Abelian case, uh, which would be the analog of the Laughlin uh, state. And there would be more exotic non-Abelian carospin liquid, which would be the analog of their, their, uh, their uh, counterpart in the, in the fraction quantum hole uh, physics, which are, for example, the Murid or Reed Rezai and so on state. So the, 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 uh, earlier on, a long time ago, uh, there have been the first construction of uh, such a carospin liquid by Camille and Laughlin, who uh, started from a simple uh, new equal one half uh, bosonic version of the uh, Laughlin state and put on a lattice. Uh, and it's now believed to be really the paradigmatic uh, abelian carospin liquid. Uh, so these uh, states would be very exotic. They would just go beyond the order parameter paradigm uh, in the sense they will not uh, show any spontaneous uh, broken symmetry. Um, they would have no local order, which make them difficult to uh, somehow um, uh, discover in a way uh, and describe. Um, but according to, uh, to when they exhibit topological order which is really the, the key feature of these of these states. Uh, so if I look, you know, very crudely, if I try to draw the um, uh, energy uh, spectrum uh, for such state, what I would see, I would see a ground state uh, manifold. And what is important is that this ground state manifold is degenerate uh, due to topological order. And actually this degeneracy has uh, um, introduced by when will depend on the topology of space, which is really an important feature. And then I'm, I'm supposed to have a, a gap, 
between the excitation and the excitation should be fractionalized uh, excitation, which are named anions. And I expect the same thing in the uh, in the in for quantum spin uh, systems. Uh, now, the particular feature uh, that we are interested in is uh, when the spin liquid would be uh, would be chiral, uh, so the, which means that uh, time reversal symmetry and parity would be broken. You know, like in the uh, fraction quantum uh, states. Uh, so, if I look at a cylinder, for example, what I expect is on the edge uh, uh, of the cylinder to see uh, edge modes. Uh, and these edge modes are, are uh, supposed to be described by uh, CFTs. So they, this is a very clear prediction. Uh, and these CFT, uh, they, they are well known. Uh, they are Wesumino Witten SUN uh, level K CFTs, um, which makes you know very clear prediction of where we should observe uh, in in our in our model. And the fact that these edge modes are protected come from precisely the fact that these states are long run on total. Now, the, the first um, illuminating paper for me about uh, chaos spin liquid is uh, a paper, a very nice paper by Nielsen and uh, Herman Sierra and, and uh, uh, Ignacio Sirac uh, that uh, tried to construct um, parent Hamiltonian for these states. Um, so that's the first uh, really uh, proof that there exists simple model that can host such states. So they use a um, conformal field theory approach, writing the, uh, the state as a CFT correlator in terms of CFT fields. And with this, all this technology, they, they, they can uh, construct parent Hamiltonian. And the 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 the, um, uh, the so 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 the, the the surprise was that somehow and maybe the bad thing uh, at first was that this parent Hamiltonian turned out to be long range, uh, which we don't usually like because it's complicated. It may not be physical, um, but uh, what they show also in the same paper is that uh, they take this long range Hamiltonian and truncate to the short distance term. Uh, then they show that the, uh, the this short range Hamiltonian actually host uh, uh, the chiral spin liquid phase. So you don't need, I mean, the long range term in the Hamiltonian are not kind of essential. And so they end up with a very simple model on the, so it's a square lattice. Uh, with a usual Heisenberg uh, nearest neighbor and next nearest neighbor interaction, J1, J2. And in addition, they have uh, some uh, cyclic uh, permutation uh, operator uh, on, on the plaquette of the square lattice. And what is nice is that this term is kind of uh, physical because, for example, in cold atom system, it could be realized with a, a synthetic gauge field, for example. So it's not it's, it's a simple Hamiltonian and the phase diagram they they suggest is something like that as a function of frustration J2 over J1 and uh, uh, the amplitude of this Carroll term. And there will be a large uh, region of this uh, parameter space, which would be uh, a Carroll spin liquid of the Kamea Laughlin type. Uh, so now what I would like to show is that actually this is uh, one example for SU2, uh, Carroll Heisenberg model, but this can be easily uh, generalized to um, uh, other group like SUN, where they would be instead of having two flavors uh, of spin, there would be N flavors. Um, and so uh, I would consider a square lattice. Now every side would... Uh, host uh, uh, n-dimensional fundamental irrep. So that's this uh, square box for, for experts. Uh, and then I can readily uh, you know, generalize my Hamiltonian with the permutation nearest neighbor, uh, permutation on nearest neighbor side or next nearest neighbor side. And then I would have, for example, a real uh, permutation on the triangles uh, and uh, imagery uh, uh, permutation uh, term on the on the on the triangles of my on all possible triangle of my square lattice, uh, like like it's shown here, IJK. 
so this is uh, this type of model we have investigated uh, similarly to what was done uh, for uh, the, the, the case of the uh, triangle lattice by uh, Pierre Nataf and, and company. Um, and for example, by using uh, exaggerization of uh, on a torus, uh, one could show that, uh, you know, so this is a spectrum for different uh, value of capital N from SU2 to SU10. Uh, we could show that actually the ground state is uh, degenerate as, uh, as it is expected um, with a correct degeneracy, which is capital N. And then there is a gap above that and then a, a continuum of excitation. So that's the first indication that uh, uh, we have a, a topological uh, order uh, in, this, in this model. Uh, what we have shown also uh, is that if you take an open system like uh, is schematically seen here, uh, then if you look at the um, uh, eigen, eigen spectrum of, of this system, uh, then the, it's clearly seen that uh, the spectrum is as a linear branch at low energy. There is a linear branch uh, as a function of angular momentum uh, that reflect the, uh, the, the, the uh, open, the, the Carroll H mode. And actually, you can look closely at the content of this uh, of this mode, and you will see that uh, by close in inspection, that it fulfills exactly what is expected for it. So in this case, this is SU4. So for the SU4 level one uh, CFT. Uh, okay. So so we have uh, we we have this uh, now the the. The, the very good evidence that simple uh, Carroll models, you know, Heisenberg plus Carroll term would uh, would host uh, in some large extension of the parameter space some Carroll spin liquid. So, uh, how do could we describe them in a in a better way? Because so far this is limited to small systems. So we need a, a, a machinery that would be able to um, somehow work in the thermodynamic limit. So this is basically the the PEPS uh, tensor network, uh, so the infinite IPEPS version of it, uh, which I guess have been discussed uh, already quite extensively by maybe by Philippe and Frederic. So I will go very fast on that. So the idea is to use a virtual ansatz describing the um, an approximation of the ground state uh, as a tensor network. So every site here will will contain a tensor and uh, and there will be the same tensor on every side so to uh, fulfill translation symmetry and the um, the parameter here important parameter is a dimension of the auxiliary space um, and the the coefficient of these tensors which are shown here uh, would be will be my virtual parameter uh, so recently, uh, so we have been uh, extended this framework to describe Carroll spin liquid in, in simple frustrated models. Uh, but here I will focus on more recent result where we give evidence. Uh, we believe that uh, this framework can uh, um, can is well adapted to describe Carroll spin liquid and. Uh, there is basically no obstruction to uh, to do this as it was believed uh, before. So this is a work by with uh, uh, UI Hazik, uh, Van Dam, uh, Lawrence van der Stretten, and and myself. Okay, so the first uh, thing uh, we can do to construct this cow spin liquid is uh, because we have these are singlet states, so. Uh, uh, they, they they are invariant under SU2 rotations. So we, we want to adapt the uh, PEPS framework uh, to describe SU2 invariant uh, uh, ground states. Uh, so, so the idea basically is to write the virtual space as a direct sum of E rep of my, uh, uh, of my group. So uh, for SU2, it would be different uh, spin uh, uh, irreducible representation, but that can be adapted also to, uh, to SUN or even more complicated group. So that's the first step. And the second step is to deal with the fact that my state is supposed to break uh, parity. 
uh, and time reversal. And uh, that can be done by writing by simple ansatz, writing the PEPs as uh, um, two terms, one terms uh, um, that will transform. So there will be a real part, imaginary part, and the two parts will transform differently under reflection. So for example, this real part will be even, and this uh, odd part, this imaginary part will be odd. And by doing that, uh, we guarantee that the state uh, breaks P and T, but doesn't break the combination of them, PT, as uh, we expect in the chaos community. So, so this is basically uh, our framework. So this can be, can be implemented. Uh, but now the, um, we, we are facing a conceptual issue uh, that was pointed out by uh, Dubai and Reed and also by the group of Ignacio Sirac a few times ago, that uh, Carl Tansen network of free fermion, this is how they state that, have no gap local parental Newtonian. Okay, so if I have a gap local, uh, so, so my, my tensor network cannot be really the, the ground state or, you know, it, it suggests it could be really the ground state of a, uh, of a gap local parent Hamiltonian like, like we have here. And, and this is for free fermion, but this is, people believe uh, that it can be extended to interacting spin. So how do we face that? Um, so, um, so first, let me tell you an unwaving argument why uh, why this this uh, this would be the case. Uh, rephrase in our PEPS language, you know, this uh, no-go theorem. Uh, so it has to do somehow with a very nice property of PEPS, with these uh, bulk edge correspondence. Um, so this uh, bulk edge correspondence, what, what is it uh, in, in simple in simple words? Is that assume I take a cylinder, an infinitely long cylinder, which I make a bipartition. So I would have an edge uh, on each of the half cylinder. Now I can um, I can compute the reduced density matrix, uh, which I can write as the exponential of minus some some uh, boundary Hamiltonian, and the spectrum of this boundary Hamiltonian, as claimed by Lee and Aldane. Would be uh, would somehow be in one-to-one -one correspondence with the edge spectrum. Now the thing is that uh, this bulk edge correspondence tells us that the correlation lengths in the bulk uh, should uh, should somehow um, trace the uh, the range of this boundary Hamiltonian. So H, this is H B, this guy here in the exponential. Uh, so now, if I um, if I consider uh, that uh, my cell should have a, a exactly a Carroll edge mode with a discontinuous dispersion, like a Sotus dispersion, then a simple argument would tell me that this Hamiltonian, the boundary Hamiltonian, uh, should be long range. And now, because of the bulk edge correspondence, uh, the bulk correlation length, strictly speaking, should be also infinite. Um, so now the, the problem is that the, if we say the correlation length is infinite, is, is it really a, a problem? Because it doesn't tell us how the spin-spin correlation, for example, should be. Um, so is it really a real obstruction to construct a physically relevant uh, Carroll topological pets? Uh, so the, uh, the answer is, uh, is no, uh, as I will... Uh, as I will show you, um, sorry, as I will show you, but before maybe I can tell you a few words, a few summary of uh, how we do uh, computation. So what we use uh, here is um, we take our tensor, uh, um, tensor network and the, the idea is to use the corner transfer matrix um, that I guess was explained uh, very well this week uh, by uh, by Philippe, um, and uh, that enables to uh, somehow write uh, construct a boundary uh, around my active region. For example, where I apply the the Hamiltonian, and and there is a parameter they will use uh, later on, which is the chi parameter, which is somehow the uh, the dimension of my environment and uh, an exact contraction will correspond to chi going to infinity. 
Um, so this I will skip. So there is this parameter chi that uh, I will uh, I will use later on. So now if I go back to my uh, simple SU2 model that uh, uh, from the paper uh, of uh, Anne Nielsen and company. Uh, so remember I had this uh, um, uh, phase diagram. So I can look at you know uh, at a point here at finite at J over J2 of or of the 0.5 J1 and and some curl parameter for 0.2. And I can compare the uh, IPEPS energy uh, with, for example, the uh, MPS. Uh, so this is really state of the art MPS, uh, like DMRG like calculation. And the first thing that we see in our ANSATS is that the, the energy is, is very good. Uh, so this is a semi log plot as a function of the bond dimension D, and you see that it converges uh, very fast, basically exponentially fast, uh, much better than the MPS. So that's the first sign that uh, the ANSATS is uh, uh, extremely good to describe this, uh, the Karaspin liquid ground state. Uh, now the other uh, sign is that the Entanglement spectrum that I can compute, uh, as I explained before, by uh, um, by looking at the uh, reduced uh, density matrix. This uh, uh, entanglement spectrum uh, shows clearly Carroll mode. So this is the energy of this Carroll mode as a function of the the momentum, uh, the transverse momentum. Uh, now, what I see also is that there is a second branch, which is very abrupt, but clearly is not infinitely abrupt. It's not really a discontinuity. So if I zoom here around this uh, branch, what I will see is that it's indeed not a uh, discontinuity, but when I increase this environment dimension, which I just uh, introduced before, then the slope uh, rises very, very fast. So we believe that when chi go to infinity, it would be a uh, infinite slope and the spectrum would be, uh, would be perfectly carol. So that's the second hint that everything, everything goes fine. Um, uh, now the third thing we look at is the spin-spin correlation. So this is here the spin-spin correlation uh, as a function of distance in a semi-log plot and uh, what we see is that a short distance, maybe up to distance, let's say 10, um, it decays very fast. So in semi-log plot, it's a linear, it's, it's very well uh, linear. And uh, if I look at the slope here, I, I get the correlation length uh, that is uh, less of half a, half a lattice spacing. So it's a very short correlation length here. Uh, so that's precisely consistent with the fact that uh, um, the, 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 the bulk of the system is, is, is gap, as it should be. Now, uh, here comes uh, the trouble. If, um, so remember I said we expect, uh, we expect uh, an infinite correlation line. So there seems to be a, a disagreement here. So uh, to have um, a good hand on the uh, correlation lengths, what uh, people do in the business is they compute the, the transfer matrix and uh, the, the leading eigenvalue of the transfer matrix give a, a, a very straightforward method to compute the correlation lengths. So here is the, uh, uh, the spectrum of the transfer matrix as a function of one over chi. Uh, showing that it seems to become uh, gapless. There are more and more states uh, uh, coming to the uh, leading eigenvalue. And there is a very nice scaling of the log of this, uh, the leading gap divided by the log of a subleading gap, uh, showing a linear, a linear behavior and uh, which basically extrapolate to zero uh, to our uh, accuracy, which means that Indeed, we expect here a uh, correlation length, strictly speaking, to be diverging. So now how to reconcile the, the two, uh, the two results? Uh, well, what we can uh, do is have a closer look at the spin-spin correlation. Um, and um, 
what we, we see now is there are in fact two parts of the spin spin correlation. So there is one part, the short distance, from which we, uh, uh, we get the, the very short bulk uh, correlation lengths. And there is a part here, a long distance, uh, which is some kind of a tail. So the slope here is, uh, is becoming smaller and smaller uh, when chi is becoming larger and larger. Uh, but this, this uh, what we can get is basically the, the weight uh, contained in this tail. And, and by uh, looking at this number, the intersect on this axis, we see that actually it's a very small number. You know, I remember this is just log scale. Here. So actually this tail is really a gossamer tail uh, uh, that, that it comes in addition to, uh, to the main feature at short distance. Uh, so, so this is something nice because um, uh, we expect that it is just an artifact which is easily, easily uh, uh, can be easily distinguished from the the, the main feature. Um, and so, the, the the thing also we have uh, discovered recently is that these similar features, uh, like the diverging correlation lengths uh, and the beautiful uh, uh, edge mode spectrum. Uh, also exist in, in simple models, uh, which SU2 model with higher spin. For example, here it's a, a, a Carl Heisenberg spin one uh, system, which uh, hosts uh, non abelian SU2 level two Carl spin liquid. And you see here that the correlation length uh, grows linearly with, with chi for a given ansatz for bond dimension D equals six. Uh, that's also seen in SUN carospin liquid. So this is for the SU4 level one carospin liquid in a simple model I, I uh, described before, where you see also growing correlation lengths with, with sky. Uh, and, and recently we look at a similar uh, Carol Hasimov model on the Kagome lattice. Uh, so this is a work we will uh, uh, shortly put on the, on the archive. And you see here again that the uh, edge spectrum as a function of the transverse momentum on the, on the uh, cylinder is, uh, is really well defined as a linear dispersion. And if you look at the, uh, at the content, uh, you, you, the content for each of these uh, levels uh, agrees very well with expected from uh, CFT, SU2 level one. Okay, so this seems to be very generic features. Uh, so uh, let me maybe conclude. Um, so uh, what I, uh, we can say now is uh, Carol Peps uh, um, possessed all the uh, features uh, of topological carrier spin liquid. Um, that indeed there is uh, an artifact, uh, which is a long range correlation tail um, and this is uh, somehow expected from the uh, PEPS bulk edge correspondence. But this artifact is not a practical limitation to describe uh, a carospin liquid with PEPS. Uh, and actually the technique enables to have a very, uh, very, very good energies uh, uh, for, for, for the growth state of, of uh, exhibiting a carospin liquid phases. Um, the thing also about this artifact is that we expect, uh, although it's very difficult to prove, but we expect this tail to be uh, less and less uh, important, of smaller and smaller weight when the bond dimension D is, uh, is increasing. Um, so the effect of the uh, bulk edge correspondence somehow becomes weaker and weaker uh, uh, for larger and larger D in a way. Um, and so an, an, another uh, interesting feature of this uh, PEPS framework is that also it can provide the, the basis of a classification uh, of topological phases and in particular Carl topological phases for quantum spin systems. And uh, uh, I hope I won't uh, have been too long. So my last slide is to uh, acknowledge uh, uh, my my uh, collaborators, or at least uh, some of my collaborators. Uh, so, in particular, Ignacio Sirac, Norbert Schu, and Roman Norris. At the we're at the very beginning, where I started to learn about uh, uh, about PEPs, uh, were were very very keen of on 
telling me, uh, you know, the, the tricks and the, the physics behind them. Um, also, I would like to acknowledge uh, Lawrence von der Schreiten, uh, with whom uh, I worked a lot on this carospin liquid, and uh, um, eventually the my collaborators at the LPT in Toulouse, uh, Mathieu Mambrini, Sylvain Caponi, uh, Jiao Chen, who was a postdoc, is now a professor in China, uh, Yura Hazik, who, is, uh, who was a postdoc also, is now working at, in Amsterdam uh, with Philippe, and uh, send you uh, with, uh, with a postdoc in, in Toulouse. Okay, and I would like to thank you for, for your attention. Didier? <laughs> Hello, yeah. So we are now open to uh, receiving some questions or comments from the participants here. Maybe I can ask one. I, yeah, I please, read. Frederick, please. Yeah. Hi, Didier. You, you showed Hi, repeatedly a phase diagram with J1, J2, Lambda C, where you had a Carroll phase that was extending to the horizontal axis where Lambda C equals zero. But is, is this yeah, really, yeah, no. was that a prediction of these, of these people, or is this no. your, your, do you agree with this? <laughs> no, no, no. I wanted to say not to believe too much the small Lambda C region. It's, 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 I've, I've, I wasn't careful enough in drawing the phase diagram. So, uh, so we don't know how uh, actually how it goes, but we believe there might be a, there might be a finite critical value, or certainly on the lambda C equals zero axis, there is no spontaneous symmetry breaking. But yeah. we don't know how it goes when you turn on the finite lambda C, so it's it's not clear. Now on the on the Kagome lattice, a new result by uh, Senyu and uh, and collaborators that we have is that there there is a small critical lambda C, um, uh, which is of smaller than 0.1. Uh, in unit of J1 to uh, stabilize the the curve spin liquid phase, mm -hmm. but uh, on the square lattice, uh, I, I don't know. I don't okay. think we can claim anything. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Actually, because there was that. Yeah. So, uh, did you, I have a question on the Kagome. So, this small critical value that you mentioned is on top of the nearest neighbor, Heisenberg antiferromagnet, right? Uh, that you need a chiral term. Uh, the one I just mentioned yeah. to you now. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. This is just the uh, uh, the J one uh, lambda, if you want. Uh, okay. Uh, so, model. Uh, yes. In, so, like, indeed. is there some uh, reconciliation with the results by Hong Hao Tu and others, where they did this, uh, you know, this uh, combination of boosting with DMRG the parton wave functions, projected parton wave functions, which find that. There is a remnant symmetry breaking, chiral symmetry breaking, but with a very small uh, order parameter, right? Scalar spin chirality that persists for uh, even the nearest yeah, neighbor we model. Don't, we don't have that. We have a finite uh, va a critical value of lambda C. Uh, of lambda C. Uh, okay, and we see, uh, we, we cannot make really, uh, we, we need to do, uh, you know, uh, scaling with, with the bond dimension maybe. So that we have, we're not able to do at the moment, but for, for the uh, the bond dimension up to d equal twelve, I think we we do find a critical value. We we find you know we even even a first order phase transition. In this oh, okay, a weekly first order phase transition between a non carol and the carol spin liquid phase. Okay. okay. Uh, we we expect uh, this to become you know as as you increase d, it would just go smaller. That's for sure. Uh, but we don't know whether it will go all the way to zero or remain finite. We, we cannot say. And that's I a calmer laughlin type of chiral spin liquid, right? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Okay. indeed. Uh, any questions from the other online participants or somebody? Yeah, okay, I'll know? ask a, a quick question, actually. Sure. Hi, Didier. And, uh, 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 sorry, I, I was in and out of your talk, so maybe you talked about it. Uh, but I, I guess usually I, I would think uh, chiral spin liquids are much more easy to stabilize on triangular lattice or Kagome lattices that have triangular motifs. Like for example, if there is a Majorana in, in the spin liquid in one of the descriptions as one of the slave particle alternative descriptions, then triangles automatically give you chirality, uh, squares uh, don't. Uh, but uh, so I was curious if you see yeah, yeah. that is the square lattice harder? 
So, so it's a it's a good point. But in fact, uh, you know, for SQ two, we can rewrite this uh, placket, uh, uh, the, this placket circulation in terms of the sum of uh, circulation or triangles uh, of the. And in the SUN case, we explicitly start with a model which has, uh, you know, exchange uh, cyclic exchange on triangles. And, and if you take J2 equal half J1, in fact, you can rewrite the model into the sum of triangle in the terms on triangles. So, so it's some kind of trick to get back somehow the physics of the triangle lattice, I believe, on the square lattice. Um, I see. So somehow there is like the physical content. And so the, the window of stability seems similar for the square lattice in Chagomir. Yeah, so, At the end so of the day, the here, window of stability. Yeah, I think the window is quite uh, quite sizable. It's not a narrow window because if you look at the gap, for example, for the model we have, which is really the one where we fine tune, right? it's a sum of triangles, so it's a special point. But the, the gaps are pretty large. You know, there are four, even five here for SU4. So, so I believe the, 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 the it tells us, you know, it suggests that the, the phase is rather extended. Uh, the, the gap cannot just go to zero suddenly. So, so it means that, uh, that that's a suggestion that uh, uh, the domain of stability is probably quite large, quite significant, I would say. Got it. Any more questions from the participants here or online? If not, then let's thank Didier again for a very nice talk. And thank you very much, Paulista. Yeah, thank you, Didier.